In today's episode of the vlog, I'm gonna show you around four neighborhoods where I'm gonna be doing open houses. So right now, we're in Nolita, and I have a row of buildings up the block that we're not gonna show you today. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the neighborhood. So Nolita, which is north of Little Italy, which it stands for, runs from Houston to Broome, from Bowery to Lafayette. So it's a very small area, but some of the architecture here is just absolutely amazing. I'm gonna take you around and show you. Right now we're on Elizabeth walking, actually, no, I'm sorry, we're on Prince, right off of Elizabeth. And we're walking down Prince Street, which is a retail corridor for a lot of boutique, high-end shops. There's also this pizza place, which always has a long line, but at 11 o'clock in the morning, I don't think people are waiting for pizza just yet. On the weekends between Mott and Mulberry on Prince, you'll see there's a collection of small, unique businesses selling their stuff. Some really cool, cool gifts. I've bought a lot of Christmas gifts or just random Saturday gifts as a byproduct of these small businesses here. So now I'm on Lafayette Street, which is the western border of Nolita. Behind me, you can see some of the shops that this neighborhood is known for. Supreme has actually been here since 1994, and often you'll find lines around the block of people trying to buy their clothes. Now I'm gonna take you to one of my favorite shops in Nolita. Not a lot of people know about it. Part of the reason a lot of people miss this place is because as you can see, it's below ground level, but they have all of the hottest sneakers at absolutely reasonable prices. I wish it was open, but let's see if we can take a look in. New York City is known for its street art. For decades, you've seen it splattered all over the city. Behind me, on the corner of Elizabeth and Houston, is Rag and Bone. This wall is changed, I think it's almost monthly, and what you can see is the people, whoever did the last piece, local artists weren't too crazy about it. They don't call it art. That's part of the reason they've demolished it, by tagging over it. In the, in the street art world, it is the biggest smack in the face that you can have to another street artist. You'll see it actually happens with even longer term pieces as we have here on this famous corner that Keith Haring was known for making popular on Bowery and Houston. So I'm gonna show you around and show you a bunch of different things. This is a prime example of when practicality kills a great piece of art. This was actually a really dope piece of Biggie until they put this uh, door thingy up. <laughs> So, right now we're in one of those really cool, unique situations where we got a parking spot that directly faces the building. So we can see everybody that's coming up, coming out. So you can actually sit in the car, do what you need to do, and be right there for when anybody shows up. Rather than sit in the car, I'm gonna show you around Kips Bay. So Kips Bay is a neighborhood that runs from 23rd to 30th Street. First Avenue to Madison. One of my favorite features is one of the parks it abuts. Madison Square Park is right on the end of what would be considered Kips Bay, and I believe it's one of the most underrated parks in New York City. I'm gonna take you there now. 
So this building right here is actually very unique. It's a full city block from 24th to 25th from Park to Madison. And why it's unique is when it was built, it was supposed to be the same size as the Empire State Building, but they ran out of money. So you'll notice is if you look up, it's like there should be more to it, but it's not there. So a fun fact about this Shake Shack is this is actually a hot dog stand for a couple of summers in the early 2000s and it became so popular that they rented them this space. Years later, we now have the international brand known as Shake Shack that all started from this park here in Madison Square. So now we're in Midwood, which is a very residential neighborhood south of Prospect Park. From here to Midtown Manhattan is probably about a 45 minute to 50 minute commute. And the housing stock is actually very diverse, where you can have 100 unit apartment buildings on one side of the block and two to three families across the street. One thing that is really nice is you'll notice we're standing right now on a city block and it's actually very quiet. I mean, the only noise you occasionally hear is the passing car, which is actually quite nice to have to be this close to the city and have more of a suburban feel. Coming to you right now from the roof of the Roosevelt, one of my exclusive buildings here in Jackson Heights. Jackson Heights is a very large neighborhood. It's about 20 blocks wide by about seven avenues and features some of the most amazing food from all over the world. There's extensive commercial corridors throughout Jackson Heights that make it such an amazing place to live and eat.